Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations, and today we're going to talk about what the biggest tire is you would want to run on a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. So a Wrangler Rubicon comes with Dana 44 axles, and a lot of vehicles for the past 50 years have come with Dana 44s, but they're not all created the same. So we're going to talk about the differences between those axles, the difference between a Dana 44 and a Dana 60, and what the largest tire size you would want to run on those different axles. I wouldn't recommend running Nitto's new 42 inch trail grappler on a Dana 44 axle. Even a Dana 60 like I have under my Ford truck, I think is gonna have its work cut out for it for these. But fortunately, Nitto makes these tires in a variety of different rim diameters and tire diameters to fit just about any vehicle, including a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. The question that I get all the time is how big of a tire can I run on a Dana 44 or how big of a tire can I run on my stock Jeep Wrangler Rubicon axle and the long answer is it depends. The short answer is uh, the stock size tires. If you want to run bigger than that there are a myriad of considerations and that's what we're going to talk with Aaron about here today. So they include things like driving style, uh, horsepower, weight. We are here tonight at Axle Line in Sparks, Nevada, just outside of Reno, with my friend Aaron Lechner, owner of Axle Line. And Aaron does all of my gearing, all of my transmission builds, all of my drive lines for the past decade. I've known Aaron, and he is an expert on all things axles. They build gigantic axles here for over the road trucks, dump trucks. So little things like Dana 44s and even Dana 60s are small for him. So we're gonna to talk today about what considerations you want to think about when you're running a specific size tire on your axle because there's a lot of different factors at play. What else can you think of that would come into consideration for what size tire you can run on, say, a Dana 44? Well, I think you nailed it with the first thing of the driving style. Um, obviously, what you're gonna put your vehicle through and what are you gonna, low speed, high speed, um, rock crawling, desert racing, all comes into play. But I would say big things to consider are, are you going to drive it on the street? Do you need brakes to stop your vehicle as bigger tires take more distance to stop? If you are high horsepower or low end torque can definitely play a factor in it. A um, lot of upgrades that we see done to them through axle shafts or different gear sets or compounds that are made up. Um, but there are things that were stock that were offered in something as simple as a large bearing spindle or small bearing spindle. Um, you may not necessarily need to go on the extreme aftermarket upgrade, um, but the, it's the little things that can make a big difference. And what do you want to break first if something's gonna go? Um, Sometimes it's what's the easiest thing to fix on the trail, or sometimes it is what's the most cost effective. So I think a lot of factors come into play with that. Sure. Yeah, I'd much rather replace, say, a hub than a ring and pinion on the trail. Absolutely. Or a U-joint. <laughs> I think you're a fan of running smaller U-joints and having that be the fuse, is that correct? Definitely, yes. I would say, when I set my rigs up, um, I would hope that my fusible link would be my pinion U-joint. Um, at that point, it's external. We're not draining differentials and taking greasy hubs apart on the trail. Uh, you carry a spare slip yoke on it. You can slide one off, slide one on, get back on the trail and go. Um, doesn't always ideally work that way, but a lot of times guys do come in and they want one ton drive lines that you know I don't want to ever break these things and and we can do that but we often suggest that maybe you do want that to go first so um, I yes that is that is still my method of madness to setting up a, a fusible link and my personal Jeep has Dana 44 axles in it that have been upgraded so they've been re-geared here at Axle Line with 538 gears. I'm running RCV shafts in the front and factory lockers, but I think that a lot of people that I see these days, they go straight to one ton axles in the new Jeeps and straight to 40 inch tires. And, and if you wanna run 40 inch tires, I recommend getting one ton axles, but then now your vehicle's 
a lot heavier. Through now you sacrifices. want to do an engine swap and you start down this path where <laughs> you change everything. And I feel like my Jeep with Dana 44s and 37 inch Nitto Trail Grapplers is pretty well balanced. There's good ground clearance there. I haven't had, knock on, I don't see any wood around here, but I haven't <laughs> had any brake issues so far with that setup. Uh, in my Toyota pickup, I had an eight inch rear end. I seem to break that about once or every other wheeling season. Um, and I had a Dana 44 in the front. It was even low pinion and I would kill ball joints in it. It had wheels with shallow back spacing. I had hydraulic assist and the steering arms were on top of the knuckles. So the ball joints wore out quite sure. rapidly. But other than that, uh, I was running a Detroit in the front and chromoly axle shafts and it all together pretty well with 37s over the years. And again, I feel like the weight, the ground clearance, there are some advantages to a Dana 44 over a Dana 60. Well, yes, you definitely opened my eyes to what a Dana 44 is capable of in your Toyota. Um, I don't know that I would have uh, thought to get to that point with that size tire, especially with the Detroit. Um, but it, it proved itself. And, and yes, the advantages are huge to be nimble, to being able to take that other line because you're not worried about dragging across a rock. So if you can squeeze around something versus just mashing and going over it, um, you know, it, it opens up your options and, and ways that, that you can attack a trail or a path or going around something. And, and I think that that plays a huge factor versus just bigger is better. And I'll just go over whatever I come across in my obstacle path. So sure. And you're referring to, so a few years ago, you drove my Toyota through Fordyce Trail for Sierra Trek when uh, I was out shooting photos and did a masterful job driving it through the trail. I think you had never even driven the truck before. I had and not. <laughs> did one of the hardest trails in Northern California and did an excellent job. The only place that I drove the truck on the trail, as I recall, was up Windchill 1 and I smashed in the door in the bedside and Aaron drove the rest of the trail and didn't get a scratch on the truck. I so. might have hit a mirror when you weren't looking. But. Oh, off. So what, what are the most common breakage that you see people coming in with? Well, I, I would say between axle shafts um, and ring and pinions are, are definitely the majority of it. We don't, you had touched on earlier, um, ball joints being wore out. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes with what do you want out of your rig? Do you want to drive it to the trail and drive it home? Um, putting a little more wear and tear on those aspects of the axle, which some people might not see as a weak point because they don't necessarily shear off, uh, but they will wear out prematurely over time. Uh, but the majority of what we see is, is definitely axle shafts or the U-joint, um, which a lot of that can just be the brand of a U-joint. Um, we see stock shafts put up with a lot and or they make a big mess. Um, chromoly shafts are, are a very common upgrade, uh, especially on the Dana 44, being the, the smaller spline size and just less spline in contact, it, it, it tends to be the weak point. Ring and pinions, I would say the deeper you go in the ratio, so numerically higher, um, creates a weak point in its own. If you take your 488 ring and pinion and compare that to a 538 ring and pinion, your tooth count is less on the pinion. So the more teeth in contact that you have, uh, the more strength you're going to get, obviously, and then also reverse cut versus standard cut, uh, which I don't know if everyone realizes in a front axle, a reverse cut is actually advantageous because you're on the drive side of the ring gear versus the coast side, where if you put a reverse cut differential in the rear, you're always on the coast side, creating more leverage and the ability to break a tooth. So we will see um, differences there in breakage, depending on ratio. The ratio can have a big factor in it. You know, talking about Dana 44s, they're not all created equal, right? So earlier Dana 44s, like the one I had in my Toyota pickup, had a locking hub, a fixed spindle, you could replace the bearings. The Dana 44 in my Jeep is, has a 44 center section, so it's a bigger carrier than the Dana 30. All the outers are the same as a Dana 30 and a TJ. So uh, the unit bearings are the same, the brakes are the same, and in TJ's, they actually used a high pinion Dana 30. So they went from a high pinion 30 to a low pinion 44, which I would argue is negligibly stronger, if at all. I mean, the carrier is, but the ring and pinion, I wouldn't yeah. think is. I, I it's think... heavier, not as good a ground clearance. 
I almost wish it had a high pin and 30 in it, to be honest. Yeah, I think your your biggest difference there is, would probably be that inner axle shaft of mm -hmm. the smaller 27 spline on the 30 versus the 30 spline on the Dana 44. So there is, it, it's a give and take. If if you could measure that difference, I would bet you're right. It's it's pretty close, so. And then with a the Dana 60, so the components, you've got some brakes here, some spindles, and. Between a Dana 44 and a Dana 60, basically everything is bigger. So the carrier is bigger, it's gonna be stronger. That ring gear, diameter, what's a normal Dana 44 is eight? About eight and a half. Eight and a half. And then a Dana 60 is nine and- Nine, uh, and, nine and three quarters. Some, it, uh, some ratios, it get, grows a little, but, okay. uh, but yes, about nine and three quarter for the Dana 60. And then the axle shafts are bigger, higher Bearings spline count are bigger. and bigger. Bearings are bigger, so the load on those is going to be less. The knuckles are bigger, the brakes are bigger. Steering, um, yeah, steering components. it's exactly what you said. Everything just gets bigger and right. heavier. And heavier, right, is the trade-off, I guess. unsprung weight. Now for rock crawling, less of a concern. You also mentioned going down the road. I mean, I've done Ultimate Adventure for years. We're here in Reno. There's tons of trails around here that I don't want a trailer to. I don't want a trailer to the Rubicon. I don't want a trailer to Ford Ice and you go into those trails a different place than you come out, so it's difficult to trailer. Um, you know, I want something I can take down the road. Sure, well, and to be able to pop out of a trail and then jump on the highway and go 65 miles an hour to get back home, it, it actually says a lot about your vehicle if, if it can pass the test and then drive home at that speed. So sure. uh, it, it definitely, again, comes to just what you want out of your rig. We've talked about a few different factors for making an axle survive. Like both my Toyota pickup and my Jeep are right around 4,400 pounds. Uh, the Toyota had more horsepower and more gearing than the Jeep has. It also had a manual versus an automatic. And I think that's probably why I broke more rear ends in it than I have in the Jeep. I think the automatic kind of cushions things and allows. Um, where my tracker, super low horsepower, it has eight inch diffs, same rear diff as in the Toyota that I broke all the time but I haven't had an issue with them because uh, less horsepower and it weighs 1,500, you know, a third less than the sure. other two. But, but you mentioned driving style as well. Yes, I, I think that plays a huge factor. Uh, and I think you could correlate the smaller the tire, the more you get away with. Um, and, and obviously power comes into play as well, is, is how much horsepower you're sending through that differential. Um, but if, if I look at, let's say I've got my Dana 44 and I'm set up on, with a 33 inch tires, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that Dana 44 is going to put up with pretty much anything I throw at it, assuming my horsepower isn't ungodly amounts. And a lot comes into play with driving style. If, if you have 33s, you may not have the ground clearance to be able to get over an obstacle. So you are going to be in a situation where you have to maybe bump and run. And you would be able to get away with a little more because the rotating weight of a 33 versus a 37, let's say, is going to be a lot less consequence. I would say 37 is where I'm going to max it out, but your driving style is going to need to reflect that. Where I'm not going to be able to bump and run over obstacles. I'm going to need to take a good line on something uh, to where I don't need to bounce, and which we all know bouncing is catastrophic when it comes to axles. Yeah, and you, you'll recall my green Ford that you've put a ZF5 in, you've put Super Duty axles in, you built the off-road design doubler for. When I first got that truck for Cheap Truck Challenge, I put 42s on it, and it's still out of 44 and a nine inch in it. And I brought spare shafts and hubs with me to cheap truck because I thought for sure I was gonna break this thing. And it had an open front diff and pretty tall gears. I wanna say like four tens. And I didn't feel like I babied it and it didn't break. And I feel like sometimes with a locker, you might break things you otherwise wouldn't just because it won't release. That tire is gonna spin no matter what. But then there's other situations where having a locker, you can kind of be more controlled and you don't have to use momentum and shock load things. Sure, well, and the ability of an open differential to be able to transfer power side to side versus a, a Detroit or maybe even a spool, you have got the constant engagement where you're, you're always putting power through both sides of the differential. The open differential will, will transfer it side to side. So 
it, it alleviates some stress on some of the internal parts of the axle. Things that I have that have selectable lockers, I typically try and leave them off unless needed. Well, and, and there's even rule of thumb there of uh, even needing to be in four wheel drive when you don't need to be in four wheel drive. It may play a bigger factor if you're going fast, um, but you know, low range is always good. You're on the strongest set of your gears everywhere and the least stress on everything. And, and you can typically find that right gear ratio or gear to be in to approach the obstacle you're up against. So it, it certainly helps in your selection there. Hopefully you found all this information really valuable when you're determining what size tire you can run on whatever axles you have and what upgrades you need to make. Or if you have a tire size in mind, maybe you want those new 42 inch trail grapplers like <laughs> I've got for my Ford. You're definitely gonna need something Dana 60 size or bigger in order to live with them. So I wanna really thank you, Aaron, for all of your information that you've shared here today. Like I mentioned earlier, Aaron builds all of my drive lines, manual transmissions, gearboxes, does all of my re-gearing in my axles, and you can check them out at axleline.com for all of your needs as well. We learned from this video that you don't want to run a 42 on a 44, but you can fit a 45 year old inside a 42. That's it for this week. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below.